Hey everybody, Ed Home at Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to have a fun little video about this really interesting DAC from Duke Audio. It is the DAC Q11, and what makes it super interesting is it's got swappable app amps and two DAC chips. So sit back, relax, and we're going to get inside this thing and have fun with it. All right, to disassemble the Duke Audio DAC Q11, there are four two millimeter hex head screws on the side. There's one single one that you need to remove, a little small one between the RCA connectors, and then just push it forward and it comes apart really, really easily. Now you can see I've been in there mucking around and the op amps are missing. Pro tip, get yourself the Dip 8 sockets. These are very inexpensive and they make your life so much easier. So it comes stock with the TI 55, uh, 32 op amps, which is a very good op amp. I've tried a couple of different ones. I tried the Burr Brown OPA 2134s. I tried the NOS Burr Brown 2604s. The, the 2134 sounded actually really good. And you can see all the different ones there. And it comes stock with a 5532s, which sounds really good out of the box. But this is what makes this hobby fun. So I did roll in TI OPA 1656s. I did roll in Burson V5s. Now, note on the V5, it has a slightly lower output than the standard op amp. So you'll need to turn up the volume on your amplifier or turn up the volume on this unit itself. I also rolled in the Sparkos 3602s. So pro tip, when you're rolling the op amps, you'll notice that there is a notch in the, board, in the socket and there are also an indicator, either a notch, and I'll show close up to this, a notch on the chip or on the older style chips, a circle that indicates pin one. Well, pin one lines up with the notch on the dip eight riser if you're using that, but it also lines up with the notch on the socket. You do not want to put these in backwards. So it's simple enough. You find the 1656 notch, notch, and just insert it. And again, 15, 50, 1656 notch, notch and insert it and we've just rolled op amps now they all sounded pretty good the stock op amps are actually quite good again the burson sounded really nice they were warm but they were at a lower output level on the rca so you'll need to be aware of that the i'm a, kind of become a fan of these nos burr brown 2134s they're actually quite good um, and of course the opa 1656 ti's are great and then of course obviously the sparkos 3602s are wonderful in there they do fit just fine Here's my issue. I'm not sure I can recommend to you that you put $160 worth of op amps into a $170 DAC. Um, I thought the OPA 1656s, which you can get inexpensively, sounded really good. Um, the Bursons are also not inexpensive. They're about 40 bucks a piece. So I'll leave that up to you. But there are so many different choices on NOS op amps out there in different styles and different brands. And they all have a little bit of a different sound characteristic. Sometimes it's a bit hard to pick it out. But if you listen to the stock op amps for a while, and I always recommend listen to the DAC for a couple of months before you think about rolling op amps, because you have to get used to the sound first. And then you'll, that's the only way you'll know if there's a sonic difference it, when you change op amps. So that's just a, a pro tip. So just out of curiosity to show you guys, that's the AKM uh, Velvet Sound AK4493 DAC chip. And way over here, this little tiny thing is the ESS 9038Q2M chip. So voltage-based chip versus current-based chip. I'll let you guys draw your own determinations about that. You know I have some opinions on ESS DACs, and we'll talk about that. I'm going to put this back together, and then we're going to talk. I'll summarize and give you my idea or my impressions of the sound quality. Well, how did I get along with the little DAC Q11 from Duke Audio? I really had a great time with this thing. I thought it was a ton of fun, and I just I enjoyed my time with it, and maybe you're enjoying your time with me, and you'd consider giving me a like and a subscribe. The unit is really, really nice. It's got some great features, in addition to, obviously, having two different DAC chips in it, so you can do kind of side-by-side -side comparisons. But word of warning, 
The output on the AKM side is only 1.8 volts, and the output on the ESS side is 2 volts, so there's a bit of a volume difference. And another thing, too, having the RCA and the auxiliary out on a 3.5 millimeter really came in handy for me because I ran the RCAs out to the Duke Audio A100 amp, and then I could run an, a 3.5 millimeter RCA out to a separate headphone amp, and I didn't have to play Cable Olympics swapping cables all around. It was just boom, boom, I was ready to go, and I really, really appreciated that. Also, too, there has been a misconception that you can blend the sound of the two DAC chips to a single output. You can't. The ESS is on output two, excuse me, output one, the AKM is on output two. Now, you can output one or the other individually, or you can output them both at the same time, but again, they're on their own RCA output, so you'd need to switch between the two at your amp preamp, whatever you're plugging it into, just so you know. And it's also really easy to, to change the mode with the remote control, and because this can be a preamp, you've got remote volume, which is really, really a nice feature. I think at $169, $170, this thing is really, really good. So that's kind of how I used it on the desktop. Duke Audio A100, headphone amp, my Kef speakers, so forth. In the big system, I put it in, and I mostly ran it with the Cambridge Audio CXA81 Mark II, which I have in for review, and the big Wharfdale Diamond 12.4s. And it acquitted itself quite well. So let's talk about the differences between the two DAC chips. Now, all the, the sonic differences I'm gonna talk about are with the stock TI 5532 op amps in it, because I want you guys to know what it sounds like when you buy it. If you wanna roll op amps, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end, but I want you to understand how it sounds out of the box. So out of the box, it sounds really good on both DACs. Now, I have a thing about ESS DACs, Sabre DACs with this digital glare. Now, this does exhibit it, but it doesn't exhibit it very bad. I think Duke Audio, the engineers and the way they configured the circuits in here, I think they did a, a good job just out of the box of making it smooth. Now, ESS DAC chips are very detailed, and I appreciate that. Um, they tend to be a little bit lean in the mid bass and through the mid range, just leaning toward uh, I don't may, not squeaky clean, but cleanish. Um, and the AKM tends to be a little warmer in the base, mid base, and a little warmer in the mid range. Not warm, warm, but kind of just you know one millimeter below neutral on the warm scale. Um, and but still very detailed through the mid range and everything. They did a great job. I use this recording from Alan Parsons, I Robot. Um, which is a really great recording. Obviously, it's an older recording, really well produced, super well engineered. Uh, if you know anything about Alan Parsons, you'll know this is a really well engineered album. And both decks did a really good job. Again, the AKM kind of leaned toward a bit of a warmer, um, less aggressive presentation where the ESS was a little more detailed, maybe in some range in the upper, tre upper mids and low treble, maybe a little extra detail maybe a little more than I care for, but not much. It was just, it's, I'm splitting hairs here a bit, but a little bit more energetic, let's put it that way. Both presented a great sound stage, and I think the DAC's job really is just to provide the best signal to the amp and the speakers, and then that the, the rest of the chain will determine you know imaging and things like that. And this did a great job of providing the proper signal, and I got all of the imaging I expected out of the amplifier and the speakers with either DAC chip, so there was no issues with that. Now, with this recording from Guy Davis, some of you older guys like me will remember Ossie Davis, the actor. This is his son, great blues musician. This is a really good recording. It's called Give In Kind. And I think all the musicians are in the studio at the same time, and I tend to find those kinds of recordings to be very pleasurable, and they kind of sound, I don't know, a little bit more realistic. I don't ever believe you're going to get a sound where the musicians are in the room with you, but I think you can kind of get a bit of a hint of maybe you're in their room. Um, not 100%, not, it's never going to happen, but just that sense of a little additional realism, let me put it that way. Both chips did a great job. Again, it's similar. It's going to be a very common theme here. The AKM was a little bit warmer, a little smoother, a little better on the low end. The ESS was a little better, a little a little cleaner, a little crisper through the mids and into the, into the upper mids and lower treble. Both did a great job all the way up. I think the ESS did a little better job ultimately at the upper reaches of the treble. It had a, maybe a, a little bit better sense of air than the AKM did. So it, that was very pleasant, no question. 
to kind of get an overall a little different sound, I used this recording from John Clamour called Touch. Now, this is a 70s recording. It's kind of a precursor to sort of kind of a new age or smooth jazz sort of thing. We used to call this wind chime music. Um, back in those days, there was a syndicated radio show. I think he's still on Facebook called Digital Star Streams. And there was a DJ named Forrest. And every time you heard him speak, there were wind chimes in the background. Um, and so we called it wind chime music. It was kind of, he played space music. That's what we call, called it. I don't know what you categorize it now, ambient electronica. There's a million category or million genres within that category. But anyway, this is a great, smooth, wonderful, very romantic, very lush sounding album. And both chips did a good job. And again, the ESS was a, maybe a little more detailed and the AKM was a little warmer. Both sounded really good. I think I got a little better sense of the bell of his, of his saxophone through the ESS, but I got a better sense of the reed against his lips on the AKM. So a bit of a balancing act. Both DAX acquitted themselves well. If I had to pick, I would listen to the AKM side preferably over the ESS side, but both were very good. I think you'll find it entertaining as hell to switch back and forth between the two. I had a lot of fun doing it. Now, op amps. I thought the stock TI-5532 sounded great. I really did. Um, I did try the NOS Burr Brown 2604s. That was very good. It added a little warmth to the uh, ESS side, maybe a little more warmth than I would have cared for on the AKM side, but very good. And these are very inexpensive. These NOS Burr Brown op amps are very inexpensive. You can buy them on eBay, millions of them for not a lot of money. And again, get the dip eight sockets, the risers. Um, and then when I put the Burr Brown 2604s in, there really was maybe a step, a, a half a step back in performance compared to the stock 5532s. I, I find that the 2604s do better on older uh, ESS chips than they do on this the, the current generation, the 9038Q2M, which I think this has, 9038Q2M. Um, so not a big change, not, re not recommended. Putting in the OPA 1656s sounded good. I'm not sure it was a huge difference over the stock 5532s. I thought maybe there was a little more, little more pace to the music, and maybe that's not the right word, a little more drive, maybe there was a little more energy on both chips, a little better in the bass, there was a little, maybe a little faster sounding. Going to the Burson V5s. Now, again, when you put those in, the output voltage drops fairly significantly, so you're going to have to turn up the volume. They're very good sounding, very detailed, very kind of neutralish to warm. So that was great on the ESS, and it was fine on the on the uh, AKM side. Sounded very, very good. Um, now, Sparco's 3602s. Everybody's going to talk about this. Honestly, guys, I can't see spending 160 bucks on two op amps to put into a $170 DAC. Did the 3602 sound better? I'm not sure they did. I'm not sure they sounded better than the 1656s. There might have been, again, a, just a little extra drive, a little extra energy in the bass um, because they could probably output a little better voltage or maybe a little better dynamics, but man, it was subtle. And again, if I was doing this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the money on the Sparkos as much as I love their op amps and other products. I just don't think it, in this category of DAC, it really pays to spend that money on this. I think you can do way better. I'll tell you what, I thought the stock op amp sounded really good. And I did probably the lion's share of my listening with those in it. And if I were to put a op amp in, if I was going to listen to the ESS side, I'd put the Burr Brown 2604s. If I was going to listen to the AKM side, I'd probably put the 1656s. They both performed very, very well. You can have fun, make the judgment yourself. And also there are a zillion other kinds of op amps other than the ones I've talked about here. Um, try them if you want to, but again, I can't advocate spending as much money on the op amps as you did on the DAC. So I was editing the video and it occurred to me that I wanted to mention something that I noticed and I failed to do so in the original take. So I'm gonna put up a picture of the circuit board where we see the two chips. I want you to notice, and I'll draw a circle around it, on the ESS side of the circuit board, there are two op amps soldered into the circuit board. You can't change those. So you have a voltage-based device with the ESS DAC chip with two extra op amps and then the two swappable op amps to get the two volt output for line level. The AKM is a current-based device, so it produces enough voltage on its own. It doesn't need those extra two op amps. It just uses the two swappable op amps and gives you the line output, but at one point it volts. So a slight difference, but again, I think it's an important distinction between a voltage-based device, ESS, 
and a current-based device, AKM. And I attribute some of that design philosophy to its sound quality, and I'll leave it at that. The other thing I forgot to mention or forgot to actually bring up in the original video was, you guys are going to ask me, comparison between the FIO K11 R to R and the Duke Audio, they sell for the same price. They're two different devices, really two different intended purposes. The FIO is a R to R balanced headphone amp DAC, where the Duke Audio Q11 is a DAC only. This has an R to R sound. It's very interesting. It's very compelling. It's very, very nice. I like it. This has two chips, so you can make it sound the way you want to, and with a swappable op amps, you can really tailor the sound. So they're both excellent. They both do a really good job. There is a difference in sound, but one isn't necessarily better than the other. I don't have a strong preference other than I do like the AKM side of the Duke Q11 better than I do the ESS side, but that's just a personal thing. They're both excellent, and they're both priced similarly. So my recommendation is if you need a good balanced headphone amp DAC and don't want to spend a ton of money on it, the K11 is great. If you want something a little that you can tailor the sound a little more to with two different chips and swappable op amps, well, then the Duke Q11 is a great choice. So you can't go wrong with either one. And that's really kind of it. So now back to our regularly scheduled program. I really enjoyed this. I really had a lot of fun with this DAC. It was enjoyable. It was fun to switch back and forth. It was fun to kind of, you know, try to listen in deep to hear the differences. I was very pleasantly surprised that the ESS side was pleasing. It was, it wouldn't be my first choice. I'd listen to the AKM side more than I'd listen to the ESS side. But the fact that I can compare and the fact that I was able to get good performance out of both sides was really encouraging. I thought, again, the engineers at Duke did a really, really good job on the design of this. And I just thought it sounded good all the way around. It had great features, great display. It's easy to use. Um, one, one thing I need to say about the display, it does show sample rate, does show volume, and does show input very legibly. So I really enjoyed that. So the Duke Audio DAC Q11, I'll tell you what, gets a Two thumbs up, I don't even do that normally, but I, I will give it a high recommendation at 170 bucks. It's a really good buy, and if you are considering one, there will be an Amazon affiliate link to purchase it in the pinned description and in the video description, pinned comment in the video description, and hopefully you enjoy the video. And if you did, I would very much appreciate, appreciate your like and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. The channel's growing so well and wonderfully and exceeding all my expectations, and it's a very humbling experience, so thank you very much for that. Obviously, there are Amazon affiliate links. Oh, excuse me. If you want to support the channel, there's a button in the bottom of the video window. You can buy me a granola bar. If you want to join the channel, there are membership links in the pinned comment and in the video description. There are Amazon affiliate links in the video description. There's a purchase link for this. There are uh, all the equipment I use in list. Uh, the list is in there. My playlists. Um, there are, again, you guys have been sending me good playlists. Check out the community post. There's some amazing music there. I've discovered some great music there, some of which will feature in future reviews. So go check it out and please send me your playlist. I'm really enjoying that. Comment. Tell me what you think. Um, you know, it seems a lot like there's the DAC of the Month Club, but this actually kind of gave me some hope in that this is so different than anything else out there. I get two DACs for the price of one and two good DACs for the price of one pretty affordable deck. So very, very uh, engaging. And I had a ton of fun with it. So let me know what you think about the DAX. Let me know if you get one and you try it out and what you think. Let me know about rolling op amps. Have you tried some op amps that I haven't mentioned? I'd love to hear that. Let's please keep the comments friendly uh, and professional. I think that's it. Like, subscribe. If you want, follow me on Instagram, comment. I've run out of things to say amazingly. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now your duty, your obligation to go listen to some music you love, maybe on a DAC with two different chipsets in it, and have a great time. Thank you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful day.